to the K to the K to the K to the K. Huge WWE and AEW names becoming free agents. Update on WWE and TNA partnership. Adam Copeland reveals he's goosed. Goosed. <laughs> Uncle Howdy faction debut date confirmed. And plans for Maxwell Jacob Friedman have been confirmed. Anthony Mandel is going up. Right freaking now. Yes, it is. Um, so, things are about to get interesting. Maybe. Maybe, Maybe. it's clickbaity. Maybe not. Bit but... Several names across both WWE and AEW are set to become free agents, some right. of which already right. have. Here's the thing, guys. It's either clickbaity or a bit lackluster, to be honest. I'll, I'll be clear about that now. But let's go. Yeah. Well, well everyone's, no one's left now. You just Sorry. basically told them all to... <laughs> yeah, it's like, I'll also give them a nice soundbite of a bit lackluster. It's exactly. like a summary of our show. Now. Basically. Um, <laughs> slightly disappointing. <laughs> Not just our show. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so... Becky Lynch is reportedly now a free agent, mm. so she's worked their final date off her contract. As of now, no new contract has been agreed. Everyone's going, is she going to end up in AW? I know. No. Do you remember that time uh, Drew McIntyre was working outside of his contract and it hadn't been agreed? He went over to AW. I remember that. I know. Yeah. It happens all the time. It happens all the time. Like, it just, it's not going to happen. Let's no. be honest, right? WWE uh, life. It's not, it, AW is, is fantastic that it's there. It's a challenger brand and all this good yeah. stuff, right? It's amazing. But... Nobody, unless you're a psycho like Moxley or Danielson, if you just love <laughs> like fighting loads and like really stiff matches and all that, no one will just go, Yeah, I want to go over there mm. unless they get released. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's... I think it, it really does depend on the character as well, though. Like, you're going to have people who are clearly dissatisfied with where they are mm-hmm. or where like their position in the company. And if they their contract comes to an end, then you might go, okay, yeah, let's speculate. Yeah. But Becky Lynch has been treated really well as has her partner, mm-hmm. and there's just no inkling or no idea mm-hmm. that like, I, I I don't really see the point in speculating because you go, well, why? What, like you say, if you're speculating, hey, if you <laughs> if you're content with where you are, mm-hmm. then why why would this even just because her contract's up? Exactly. Because yeah. at the end of the day, it's business, isn't it? And mm-hmm. she's. She knows her worth and has proven her worth, so she's going to be debating that with them. Yeah, hundred um, percent. I really can't see a scenario where they're going to go. Actually, we're not going to offer you, but you, well, you know, there's going to be some back and forth, but they're, they're going to reach an agreement if, if that's what's happening. Because yeah. a lot of people are saying she's just having some time. Well, like, off, well, the, the thing is, well. she was meant to have time off before Rhea Ripley got injured in the first place, and so she had to come back to do the whole program with Liv and blah blah blah. So. No, Becky Lynch isn't going anywhere. But there's a couple of other WWE names and there's a couple of AW names. So the oh. WWE ones, Ricochet. I don't think he's going anywhere either no. because then they won't be able to fucking focus on Samantha Irvin every second they get. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a Ricochet match in the last two years because of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know he has them. <laughs> yeah. And it, yeah, I don't. The, the less I say about that, the better. I'm yeah, not. A, yeah. I'm not a fan of it. Now, do you know what? what she does, but we don't need the fucking she, zoom in on her. She's, every she's a great announcer. It's more. It's not even hair though. Is it? She's not in control of the cameras. But mm. the fact that the cameras want to fixate on hair mm. rather than I don't ricochet know. is just like I get it. They they like the they love each other and stuff, but it's like. But like it, it's a, it's just, she's in on it because it's all overacting course, and she's like you know oh it. my god it's like well you know he's fine like so shut up but um <laughs> but yeah so ricochet you know he's fine <laughs> well yeah you know he's fine uh so ricochet i can't see him going anywhere and then the other one is chad gable he's literally fighting for the intercontinental title yeah. clash no he's he's they're gonna they're gonna pay their dues with him he's yeah. he's gonna like i hope he's gonna win Right. But, uh, we'll come on to that in our class of yeah, predictions but before. The, they are they're treating him with the respect that he always should have had yeah so, exactly yeah. Um, but I guess it, it, the interesting thing is there's a lot more cases now where in WWE where they're coming to the end of the contract and they're not necessarily you know they're not like agreeing it in advance almost it's like mm-hmm. literally getting down to the wire yeah. so whether people actually, are just going I think it's a change in business though as well like under the like, look what happened with Vince McMahon and maybe maybe this is the right way to do things because what was happening previously was Vince was offering them great deals and long contracts, and then we had was it Black Thursday or whatever they called it, yeah. where they just released a shit ton of people because it wasn't sustainable. Mm-hmm. Whereas maybe this is a more thoughtful approach of going, well, let's not rush into a deal, mm-hmm. let's negotiate, and that has its slight risks to it, but they're not, they don't seem worried, and that's fine. Yeah, you know what I mean. Well, look, Chad Gable be an example. If he was, if it was Shorty G coming up to the end of his contract, then you go, okay, maybe he's going to leave. Well, exactly. But like right now. It it just seems logical that they're going to reach an agreement. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, 
So that, that's the WWE side of it. From an AEW side, it is very different because these are all people who are no longer with the company. Yeah. We already spoke about Paige Van Zandt, so we won't talk about that. Yep. But Jake Hager. That's an interesting gone. one to me. Um, so he was a JR hire in mm. WWE. Big Oklahoma boy, wrestler, right up JR's alley. Mm. Um, so I don't think, I can't see it, to be honest. I don't know whether he's going to stick with Bellator, and I don't know whether he's yeah, even I mean, doing this, MMA this anymore. This is honestly but... the thing that, because like, AEW afforded the opportunity to do the Bellator stuff, and I don't know if WWE would want him doing that, because why would you? Why would you want him risking to actually hurt himself quite badly? Yeah. Mm. Um, but I'll be honest, like so many people, the minute somebody's like in AEW is either come to the end of the contract or puts out a tweet that can be interpreted a certain way, it's like, oh, they're not happy. They should go to NXT. They'd be treated right. And it's like, no, uh, you can't send everyone to NXT. No. And everyone have TV time. No. Like, what, what do they expect is going to happen for Jake? Well, yeah. Honestly, what do they expect is going to happen for Jake? Uh, we'll have Jack Swagger back, and then he won't be on screen. We're that's the, pe- what'll we're the people back. back that, that's what will happen. Yeah. You won't really see him on screen. No. He's, he's in the class of, like, Baron Corbin. He's a fantastic worker, but they won't really have anything for him to do. No. It's, it's exactly like, that. And I, and I, I am actually a big fan of Baron Corbin as a worker, and I really think they should treat him with a bit more respect. But mm. he, you know, he's done wonders on NXT. They called him back up to the main roster, and again, you don't really see him. It is what it is. No, but, you don't. So, Jake Hager, I don't know, maybe TNA if he decides to stick with it, or maybe, maybe he's just well, maybe if he goes done. to TNA, then yeah, and NXT as well, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, so Jake Hager is one of them. Um, Arn Anderson is gone. He's thanked AW for his time there. Is he going to join up with Cody again? Nightmare Pro- family. Fucking, fucking probably. Like. Because best thing to do with Cody is just to run through all the shit he did in AEW. Basically, yeah. Um, so. so he's going to come in with his fucking cue card and be his manager. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's, let's go with that. That's a possibility. The other one, I think we might may have touched on this already. Mark Henry is now done with the company. I think WWE would be stupid if they didn't pick him up. Not for an on-screen role. No, no. You know, like this whole next in line thing yeah. you've got. Oh, that's what he does. 100%. He's got talent from Marley, that 100%. guy. 100%. So I could see him being a future yeah. fucking... Talent relations. It's, it's like, a shame, and I don't know whether they've they've tried to keep him in AEW or whether it just went for him or whatever. But you're right; he's got he's he's a mind for the business, and yeah. it, it is one of them where you go, WWE would be daft not to pick him up. AEW would be daft not to try and keep him. And mm. I don't know if they did. I hope they did. But yeah. sometimes things aren't destined that way. Are they? No. And the last one came courtesy of his brother on his own podcast. Jeff Hardy is reportedly going to be done. Old Jeffard is going to be done in a matter of weeks. Okay. So, but like, what do you do with the Hardys now? And the only thing, the only place I can see for them is TNA, and it's a fucking shame. Oh. I think we spoke about they had they had Edge and Christian, mm. and the Hardys, and, in it, and they never got shame. it again. I, I, I'm not look. I know there's fanboys here, like we're here. Yeah. Um, Back in the like, I'm not having a go at the Hardys when I say this, but like Jeff kind of fucked their momentum in AW. You know, well, he always does. Yeah. <laughs> Tails yeah. all the time. Jeff, Jeff fucked their momentum in AW with all the, the controversy, and then because they kind of got sort of semi punished for that, didn't they? And then they never really picked back up. Um, Matt had a pretty good run in AW. If you look back during the pandemic era, the the yeah. the freaky uh, Matt Hardy stuff that he did mm. was actually played really well into it. Like I remember him appearing uh, yeah. with Vanguard One. Yeah. Uh, but then they didn't have the audience who was just appearing randomly around the stadium and stuff. He was great in that era of AEW, but um, yeah, like what do you do with them now? I think I honestly think what they're destined for is just a Legends contract with WWE and appearances at like main well, and stuff. It's, it's either going to go, it it's either gonna go down that route or they go to TNA, reform, you know, Brother Nero and all that good stuff. And then WWE just buys it anyway, and then they end up with a Legends contract probably. Mm. So yeah. Um, well, it's a shame because I would have loved to see the Hardys one final big match. It should have been against the Young Bucks. Should have. Well, yeah. Or shame. Edge and Christian while they had the chance. Yeah. Well, here yeah. we are. Yeah. Talk to me. Yes, you. Sorry. I didn't know if there was any more releases. I thought you were going to mention uh, Ricky Starks, you see, so I was waiting for it. He's been released, though. He's just I, not I, I, Tony Khan's just not it. using him. What about Andrade? He apparently put a tweet up or some shit that he's not happy. You know. There's yeah. so much more we could have, like... But they're, they're not released well, We need to clickbait. We're not about the clickbait. Hell. It's factual, what we say. <laughs> uh, I like it. Uh, but now, just a quick update on WWE and TNA's partnership, Carl. Mm. Um, it's carrying on. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's basically it. Obviously, okay. they, were, you know, they were big big hype on um, Jordan Grace. Obviously, we've all seen quite recently um, sporting her... WWE... W, 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 
NXT. Uh, no, NXT and A. That's why I got it wrong. <laughs> I knew it was something. WWT and A. No, NXT and A yeah. uh, as a concept. And I think that's just going to, that's probably going to roll off the tongue a bit too well. People are going to go for it. Yeah. They're, they're very big on how well that went over. Definitely more than. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I don't work in naming. Is it naming? Is that a thing? Branding. 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 That's the one. Um, yeah, but they obviously the Jordan Grace stuff went over incredibly well. It sounds like she's not done with, um, you know, appearances in the company. Mm-hmm. Uh, in all honesty, it sounds like there may be some suggestion that of like you know let's hold some championships and move some things. Well, she's um, she's but, going to be there at Battleground, and she yeah, yeah exactly. she was there last night on NXT. So mm-hmm. this is probably the the closest thing because you know when you get an appearance, you go, ah, they're not gonna they're not gonna take those. But it, this is like the biggest thing of going. You know what? They're all under endeavor, and you can tell because the you're probably gonna have some belts appearing in some places here now, yeah. which is fine. Well, know? exactly. Um, um, but. The other mention was that uh, apparently Moose has uh, has mentioned to Jordan Grace somewhat playfully because he was like, "Why didn't you tell me?" And she's like, "Cause you're the biggest loud mouth in the company, kind of thing." <laughs> but uh, somewhat playfully, he was like, "Oh, you know, tell him I'd be interested." So it seems that you know she might not be the only TNA person showing up. Uh, and if you're a TNA fan, that's great. That's fantastic. That's <laughs> wonderful for you. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. But if you if you're not a TNA fan, you're gonna start seeing some random people in your NXT. Oh, there's some random people in my NXT. <laughs> um so again another short and not so sweet one. Uh anyone who saw Double or Nothing, uh, Adam Copeland, the madman that he is, decided to do a spot which he just didn't need to do. He jumped off the top of a cage to try and put Malachi through a table, ended up just landed on his feet and he's uh <laughs> Fractured his That's uh, not the tibia. way to put it, mate. Yeah. Turns out he hasn't landed on his feet. Uh, but he's fractured his tibia. So, yeah, not not ideal. But I believe the recovery time is now going to be um, like six to nine months at least. So there's a chance we're not going to see him wrestle for the rest of this year, which is a shame. That's pretty sad. Um, yeah. I think what a lot of people have said in AW is backstage, you know, you talk about locker room leaders and Punk was a locker room leader. You go to him for anything. He said they've never had anyone like... Copeland before, so he was yeah, just like he just loved wrestling. Didn't yeah, he? I can totally see him being like that. Yeah, it sounds like he wouldn't be there just as a as a dick either. Go, this is what you need to do. He probably like hash stuff out with people and be like, yeah. well, you know, you could do this or what I've done is this and that kind of thing. He's more like a mentor than anything. So I think a lot of people are a bit not worried, but they feel like he's he's going to be a big miss. He's even just from a backstage I mean, perspective. He, I suppose it doesn't work practically. I was going to say, does he have to be a miss backstage? But I suppose there's less reason to be there. But You'd like to think there could be some sort of coaching or sort of role there while he's out injured. Like yeah. he doesn't necessarily have to not be around. That's but, fair. I mean, it, it's gotten for him. I know he, he he put that video out in the, not long after the pay per view, and you know that is it's devastating. And to be honest with you, not to go into like booking decisions, but because they could didn't know this was going to happen, but you know that this match ended with a Malachi win would have been ideal, wouldn't it? Well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, you know. Uh, I guess. Yeah, it's a tough one. Obviously, he didn't know no, the severity of his injury. The but... scapegoat, I think it is now. Yeah. Got it. yeah. Well, no, not yet. They're doing a tournament, so aren't Where are they just going to put it on? Yeah, they were going to. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a big loss for them because, let's be honest, he's not got that long left. So, obviously, a six to nine months on the sidelines when <laughs> you're already on the, the twilight of your career is not ideal. So, I was never a fan of Twilight, though. Yeah, me either. Especially the werewolves. Was that about? It'd be a vampire movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Yeah. Me again. Eh? It is. So I'm not gonna go through all the fucking. You, you're you're you love this stuff, right? I'm not gonna try and uh, not gonna try and phrase all of this shit. But Uncle Howdy, or the Wyatt Six faction, that this cryptic because we don't really know what it is yet, and that's that's the fun of it, and this is the bit you really enjoy. The, you know, we've had cryptic things for weeks. We had the website being taken over, we had QR codes appearing everywhere. So we know some shit's going down. But most recently, um. Uh, it was, I want to say it was on socials, the message, but basically it alluded to a potential date for mm-hmm. the debut of this faction, which we believe could be the 17th of June <gasps> or June 17th for our American fans. <laughs> um, why did they, why, why I, is that? I, I really don't know. Mm. And apparently they flip reverse it when you get to the 4th of July. You say the 4th of yeah, July. Yeah, weird that, right? Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so it looks like it might be Monday Night Raw. That we we see the the debuting Wyatt Six potentially mm. again we it's obviously got those rooted connections to Bray Wyatt whether they're going to stick with the Wyatt Six as a name I don't know but um, all will be revealed Carl all will be revealed it's very interesting I think there's a couple of different like I think 
initially people were saying, oh, they're going to be at King and Queen of the Ring. And people were saying they're going to be at Clash, which selfishly from my side of things, I was like, that was cool. Maybe we'll yeah. see them at Clash. Um, but now it seems like it's going to be imminently following Clash, so literally the Monday after. So I think it makes sense. Um, to, to, it's got three, got three hours to play with of television, haven't you? So let's yeah. take a chunk of that off by bringing this new faction in. But I'm right. Um, I just love... I can't wait for the faction's debut so people fucking stop doing this, but I love that they just pick anyone who's got a slightly mysterious or creepy character and go, they're going to be in it. Joe Gage going to be in it. Well, to be like, fair... Oh, why, why, why are we picking people? Well, to be fair, for the saddos like me who do like to look into these things and try and figure it all out and go in... I don't go into the source code, but I read stuff where people have gone into the source code and things. Let's figure out is there are so clues like film. that it's all right it's not my i enjoyed it it's not my favorite i enjoyed it um but there has been like things alluding to certain people shall we say joe gacy being one of them nikki cross being one of them so nikki cross i think would be a great addition joe you gacy. just don't like joe gacy joe gacy overrated it makes sense as Death well the rumors doesn't make any sense to me well so, no well he's creepy too but joe gacy when he was like got written off tv or whatever and done nxt he was like he was hearing whispers and stuff and it kind of all Makes sense anyway. So from a storyline perspective, it's almost well, like this. You was... already ruined schism or whatever the fuck that was called. <laughs> schism. No, the name schism ruined schism. Yeah, maybe actually. Yeah. Just like script. I mean, no. Oh, the grizzled young rats go fuck this. <laughs> Might have ruined that too. <laughs> it's fair play. I was gonna say scripts ruined scripts, but now Reggie ruined Reggie ruined Reggie, didn't he? Let's be honest. But uh, from flips to scripts. Best of luck, kid. He flipped the script. Hey. Um, um, yeah. So. I can't remember what I was saying. Faction. Yeah. Anthony hates Joe Gacy. So. I don't hate Joe Gacy. I just I feel like it's like they've gone. Oh, well, he you doesn't know, got, believe got... in Joe Gacy. <laughs> he, he's just... I don't understand the the desire to have a parody of Bray Wyatt in a Bray Wyatt rated faction. I don't, that, that doesn't feel like paying homage to me. That just feels like you're looking at it going, he's no Bray Wyatt. And I don't think that'll do him any favours. I have nothing against him. I think that's all we're going to do. Oh, so hopefully his character in this won't be an homage to Bray Wyatt. But the, the worrying He's thing about this, on that the worrying thing about this is the whole fucking faction is an homage to Bray Wyatt. So straight away, it could be dead out, out the gate. Yeah, but, but if you have one person who is a wish version, hmm. then you're gonna you, straight away it's gonna, not going to do them any favors because no, you, all you're going to do is directly compare them and go, you know, Bray Wyatt. Yeah, but like, but like Uncle good. Hardy, if that's what it, it Bo ends up doing, or whether it's a variation of the character is like a variation on the fiend as it is. So it's going to be a challenge for them, but I'm excited to see what they do. And I just hope, and obviously it was no fault of Bray's, but <laughs> all the stuff that happened yeah. in the run up to Bray was better than what we got yeah. because he couldn't do but, anything. But there was payoffs to ha- be had there because I think we all had got to the point, like we knew that, like especially from as much as the, it, it was a painful fucking match, the Mountain Dew pitch black match made it clear that the Uncle Howdy was a separate person. So you can yeah. separate Bray Wyatt from Uncle Howdy. So you go, well, that's, it's a variation of The Fiend or a manifestation of his mind or however they were going for it, but it was clearly going to be a different wrestler. So yeah. that's where it becomes, you go, okay, that can, that, that, I get how they can carry that on. That works for me. Mm. We'll see. We'll see what happens. But June 17th. June 17th. June 17th. Be there. Just be there. Uh, and lastly, again, not a massive one to talk about, but MJF is back, <laughs> kind of. Okay. I'm going to jab at all the wrestling again, are you? What not do you mean? A, not a massive one. I no, get it. They're not, not, they're not as big as some of the WWE wrestlers. That's not what I'm saying. Fucking hell. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> um, it's not that much of a news update is what I mean because MJF came back and obviously we saw that double or nothing. Didn't see him last week. There was a little bit of um, a video package but um, in terms of what's next for him it seems Roosh is going to be his first feud when he comes back which I just... Shouldn't we deal with the devil stuff? Get that fucking So done? that's, ca- that's kind that of been dealt with. So a double or nothing, well, he came down, he, he beat up Adam Cole. Nuts. Yeah, beat up Adam Cole a little bit. Because apparently Adam Cole is nowhere near being ring ready. So they don't want to just delay it anymore. So they've just pushed that aside for a bit until he's back and maybe they'll revisit it down the road. How but wank is that? That's pretty wank. But MJF's come back and what's also wank is he goes against Roosh. And it's not against Roosh, but why Roosh? Why Roosh? Well, look, you can... <laughs> Clearly they don't want to Roosh into it. But... <laughs> I'm a dad, I can't resist it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like, where's Wardlow? <laughs> I want to read that book. <laughs> <laughs> that is brilliant. And he's massive as well, so you'd be like, there, he's right fucking there. Can we release that? <laughs> Every day. <it's> just... 
<laughs> oh, that's so good on socials later. <laughs> He's gonna wear the Wally when you put him in there, fucking massive as well. Oh, I think we're there. Oh. <laughs> yeah, look, look for that book available in all good bookstores soon. Uh, anyway. <laughs> He was part of this whole devil thing, wasn't he? Mm. And would have been a perfectly good feud for MJF, given their history. So, all right, Adam Cole can't step up, but there he is, right? Mm. You go with that? Yeah. <laughs> Why are we going with Roosh? <laughs> uh, just, feel, I just feel a bit Roosh. You're right. <laughs> um, but, you know Jonathan Coachman? Apparently he's still a thing. Maybe the coach back in yeah. the day. Right. So I don't know whether he's got his own podcast or he was on someone's podcast or what. Mm. But, have you heard this shit? Right, people that people are buying into. Mm. He said his belief is that MJF has signed a four-year deal with AW worth sixty million dollars, so fifteen million dollars a year. I mean, that are sounds like some me? bullshit. But um, Surely you know what? No you way. know what pisses me off about these things? Go the his belief. Oh yeah, like I hate shit like that. Why? Well, this is we could right try and monetize the fuck out of ourselves by coming up with shit like that. There's like, a lot of people just, out there that just do. randomly pick shit out of your head and go, well, it's my belief that MJF mm. is a fucking cult leader. Right? I don't know. I don't know. Right? Maybe, maybe there's an art to this because I wasn't very fucking good at it. <laughs> right? But, yeah, it sounds you believe that, but where's it coming from? Like, I mean, did he cite sources? I don't think so because he doesn't fucking have any. Very true. Bullshit, man. Yeah, but obviously everyone's eating this up going, oh my God, you believe MJF's getting paid $15 million a year? Tony's lost his mind and all this. Like, there's no facts behind it. <laughs> Tony's lost his mind. <laughs> he just opens his wallet and he's like, how much? 15? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't believe that, but it, I, I can believe the fact he signed a four-year deal. He revealed a tattoo on the back of his calf, didn't he, saying, like, bet on yourself or whatever. So <laughs> maybe that's where the speculation comes from. Yeah. <laughs> it's MJF's gone. If you pay me $15 million a year, <laughs> I will fucking tattoo AEW on my leg. And anyway. Tony's just gone. Think <laughs> <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> um, but yeah, See, so. are people laugh at his tattoo? If I was getting 50 million a year, that <laughs> tattoo wherever the fuck he wants on me, like, yeah. Fucking tattooed on my ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, just, well, NA and then a W. The way you put in the E. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> all, all be revealed. Um, so, yeah, so. That be the news. Um, I can't wait to release uh, Where's Wardlow <laughs> because it's going to be brilliant. But uh, before we go, um, in case you haven't heard of them, there's a new uh, charity out there, a uh, UK-based charity called uh, the Hot Tag Foundation. Indeed. Doing some fantastic char- charitable work, collecting donations of um, toys and other wrestling memorabilia and stuff yeah. um, at local wrestling shows, and they're going to box it all up, yeah. and they're going to be donating it to you know some needy kids and some yeah. charities. We we totally admire what they're trying to do. We we've talked in the past about wanting to be able to sort of get involved in it in a charitable way, but still have that connection to wrestling. And then you know these guys have, have sort of set up, and we've ended up communicating with them. And you think you know what that 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 embodies exactly what we we want to try and do. Yeah. So obviously we're we're big on sort of. In getting involved and promoting as much as we possibly can, you'll see a bit more branding from us coming down the line. Yeah, um, hopefully we'll get and, um, you know, the founder and maybe um, yeah. you know one or two of the other um, people involved with it on the show as well, just to say a bit more about the mission and what they're doing. But um, look out for them. I think they're at the at hot tag something. We'll get better at that. We um, will get better at that. Well, check them out. Anyway, we follow them on Instagram. And you so. know what? It's all online, so we'll link it. Even though Carl couldn't fucking remember what to say, we'll link it. Look at the thing. Yeah. Pr- no, click more. Not, not that thing. Click, click, see more. <laughs> there you go. There you go. You found it. Um, but yeah, do the usual like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And we will catch you on the next one.